Today we are talking all things crafting stations. Now we have a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's go inside and let's get to it. Seven Days to Die is a survival crafting game. There are literally thousands of items that you can craft in this game. However, many of these items can only be crafted at specific crafting stations. So today we are going to discuss each of the individual crafting stations, how they are unlocked, what it takes to make them, and a general overview of what items can be crafted at each station. The first crafting station we want to talk about is the campfire. You actually craft a campfire as part of the beginning quest to Seven Days to Die. This station is automatically unlocked at level 1 and only takes 5 small stone in order to craft. The campfire is used to cook up the various food and drink recipes in Seven Days to Die. You can also use the campfire to make glue, grain alcohol, and antibiotics. The campfire does require fuel in order to use. You can throw pretty much anything that's flammable in one of these three slots in order to utilize the campfire. There are also three special items that you will want to be on the lookout for in order to maximize the recipes available at the campfire. You want to find yourself a cooking pot, a cooking grill, and a beaker. There are several campfire recipes that require these tools in order to craft. The next crafting station is the forge. Now in order to craft a forge, you will need to find either the forge schematic or you will need level one of the advanced engineering perk located in the intellect tree. Once you have the forge unlocked, you will need 50 small stone, 60 clay, 10 leather, three duct tape, and three short iron pipes. The forge is one of the most important crafting stations in seven days to die. It is used to smelt down raw resources and turn those resources into several very useful items. Now in order to utilize the forge, you will first need some fuel. Again, pretty much anything that is flammable can be thrown into one of these three fuel slots. Then you click the turn on button and you can get yourself to forging. Under the smelting section, you will see a list of all of the raw resources that you can smelt into the forge. All you need to do is put your raw resources into one of the two slots on the side here, have some fuel in your forge, hit that turn on button, and the resources will automatically start smelting into the forge. Now you'll notice as time goes by, our resources are starting to increase. We now have both iron and clay smelted into our forge. Now it is very important to remember that you have to have these raw resources smelted into the forge before you are able to craft anything else out of the forge. But once you have the resources smelted in, on the left hand side here you will see a list of all of the items that you can craft at the forge. So go ahead and select whatever you want to make, select the amount that you can make, Again, this amount is limited by the number of raw resources you actually have smelted into your forge. Hit that craft button and you will notice that your items are starting to forge. Forged items will be deposited in the output box on the bottom. Now let's say you accidentally start crafting an item you do not want. All you have to do is hover over that item being crafted and you can cancel it. You see the X there? Boom. We just canceled that resources. It puts the resources that we did use back into our forge, and then we can pick whatever else we wanted to craft. One more important section of the forge is the tools section. There are three unique tools that can be added to the forge that increase the forge's capabilities and opens up new recipes. The first tool is the advanced bellows. This will increase your forge smelting speed by 50%. That means the raw resources being smelted into the forge will be smelted 50% faster. The next tool is the anvil. The anvil increases your forge crafting speed by 50%. That means that the items being crafted out of the forge will be crafted 50% faster. The last tool is the crucible. The crucible is required in order to craft all steel items as well as bulletproof glass. The next crafting station is the workbench. 
In order to craft a workbench, you will need to find either the workbench schematic or reach level two of the advanced engineering perk located in the intellect tree. Once you have the workbench unlocked, you will also need 25 forged iron, 20 mechanical parts, one wrench, one claw hammer, and 50 wood. One important thing to keep in mind while crafting the workbench. The level of wrench and hammer that you need does not matter. So make sure to use the lowest level wrench and hammer that you have at your disposal. Just to be safe, it is best to put your high level wrench and hammer into storage while you are crafting the workbench. As soon as you hit the craft button for the workbench, the game will go ahead and grab the very first wrench and hammer that you have in your inventory in order to complete that recipe. The safest thing to do is just to make sure that the only wrench and hammer you have in your inventory at the time of crafting is the one that you want to use in order to craft the workbench. The workbench opens up a whole bunch of recipes that cannot be crafted anywhere else. Unlike several of the other crafting stations, the workbench does not require any fuel or special tools in order to use. All you need to do in order to craft up items in the workbench is make sure you have the required items in your inventory and hit the craft button. You can have up to four different items queued at the same time and they will be deposited in the output section at the top right. The next crafting station is the cement mixer. In order to craft the cement mixer, you will first need to find either the cement mixer schematic or unlock level two of the advanced engineering perk located in the intellect tree. You will also need a workbench in order to craft the cement mixer. The cement mixer cannot be crafted in your inventory. Now, once you have the cement mixer unlocked, head on over to your workbench with 25 forged iron, four springs, one engine, and 10 mechanical parts in order to craft up your cement mixer. While the cement mixer may not have as many recipes as some of the other crafting stations, the ones that it does offer are extremely important. The most important of which is concrete mix. Concrete is vital for upgrading your base. You will need a lot of it. And the cement mixer is the only crafting station in the game that allows you to make concrete. And the last crafting station we need to discuss is the chemistry station. In order to craft a chemistry station, you will first need to find the chemistry station schematic or you will need level one of the physician perk located in the intellect tree. You will also need a workbench in order to craft the chemistry station, as well as one beaker, 100 forged iron, three cooking pots, 30 short iron pipes, and five bottles of acid. In order to utilize the chemistry station, you will need fuel. Again, if you put pretty much any flammable item in one of these three slots here, hit that turn on button, then you can utilize the chemistry station. This station opens up a whole bunch of very useful recipes indeed. It opens up items like glue, gunpowder, gas cans, oil, as well as several medicines. The crafting features of Seven Days to Die are extremely versatile. There are so many items that you can craft in this game. As such, there are several crafting stations that you will need in order to open up all of those recipes. Obtaining these crafting stations opens up a world of possibilities. So go ahead and craft up those stations. Use those stations to craft up anything and everything you may need and let your imagination go wild. The building and crafting in Seven Days to Die is pretty much limitless. Hopefully you folks found this video helpful and or enjoyable. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. Speaking of which, click the box in the top right corner to see a special playlist of tutorial videos with similar subject matter. 
But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.